2022. They have been featured on the CBC's Q, the Toronto International Festival of Authors, and were long listed for the CBC Poetry Prize in 2021. Following this reading, you can find Charlie at the Brick Books table. Charlie Patch, everyone. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, it's a real honor to be here and just to be watching people interacting with books. What better, what better way to be in the city right now? Um, and yeah, so I don't know if anybody else watched the Mike Tyson, uh, Jake Paul uh, travesty that happened the other night, but here's my take on it, is that those of us who remember Mike Tyson from the 80s, we remember a man that was out of control. And it took him a long time to sort of rein that in. And Jake Paul tried to get that part of him awoken again. He kept trying and trying and trying. And Mike did none of it. He didn't rise to that occasion. And to me, that's what made him win that fight. There's a greater fight and Mike won it. Uh, and Jay Paul is just, um, I don't know, I don't know why he exists. Anyway, so I wrote a poem that's included in Why I Was Late, and it's all about Mike Tyson, and so today I really wanted to share it with you. Uh, because as someone who has a lisp, uh, meeting Mike Tyson, he was the first other lisper I ever met, um, as in I saw him on TV, and it just blew my mind that people were afraid of a lisping person because I've been very bullied. So this is my poem for him, uh, my first lisping hero. We called you champ, Mike Tyson. When you and I open up our mouths, they can turn into bullseyes. And we stay silent in our defense because words can be landmines to step into. The first time I saw you, unapologetic, unabashed on the microphone, you became my first lisping hero. I imagined us in my playground bullies fleeing our earthquake footsteps. I tried to duck and dance around them like a butterfly Ali, but you were no one's punching bag. You launched iron fists back to the tune of 38 arrests before you hit age 13. The boxing world plucked you from a form school. Maybe you felt saved. I know how education can seem like the enemy and for a boy targeted for his high-pitched, lispy voice. You probably felt relieved. The teacher would never call on you again. Your lisp never got better. Your voice never dropped. You put up your dupes, gave up on language, and let your dreams narrow. Before your mom died, she gave you to your boxing coach, Gus D'Amato, who polished you up like a custom auto, but he could never install any brakes. There were no bells in the bedrooms you strode into, no towels to be thrown in front of your thundering waves, raised to be a wild animal. You looked calmest, wrestling with your Bengal tiger. Even your friends said you belonged in a cage. But Mike, Years used to betrayal as being punched in the gut. I mean, the secret to the salvation of your soul left when you were just two years old. There are no S sounds in dabs. You could have said it every day without fear of retribution. Instead, you showed it in the barrel chest. They bounce back with the blank stares of men who love you for your fists and the bags of money they bring. Maybe. What you needed was a male embrace, not to be cut short by a bell. Now, after the wake of Hollyfield spat out here, your empire crumbles, your four-year-old daughter dies, your other children look at you in fear, and your beloved tiger paces behind some stranger's bars. The television calls you a monster, speaks of your lies, your crimes, your legacy of violence. Mike, I like your new heavyweight fight, the one called sobriety. I 
with your daughter's easy laughter makes you a champion. The father who is there, the father who came back. Sometimes, I've written so many endings to your poem, Mike. Some were too kind and others damned you. But you grew in love and recovery. Some humans are capable of so much when we give them a chance to get up off the mat. Thank you so much. recognizes excellence in Canadian poetry in English, published in Chatbook form within Canada. The award celebrates the work and life of E.P. Nichol, a preeminent Canadian poet who devoted his career to expanding the possibilities of language, creating visual and sound poetry within and in addition to his numerous books and countless chapbooks. Um, well, your M2 press is Gangia and Gronk. Uh, Nickel was a mentor to many writers, me included, and an inspiring community builder. He was an advocate for poetry in general and a champion of small press publishing in particular. Towards the end of his life, Nickel co-founded with Philip McKenna of the Phoenix Foundation, a poetry chapbook award which, after Nickel's passing, was renamed in his honor and has continued under the ages, first of the Phoenix Foundation and currently of the Impressor. The prize is awarded to a poetry chapbook judged to be the best submitted. The author receives $4,000 and the publisher re receives 500 bucks. Uh, the $4,000 prize is generously provided by an anonymous donor. The $500 prize is provided by Carl Jurgens and Michael Dean. Michael Dean is here today. Before we announce the winners, we want to thank and commend these generous donors for their support, which is absolutely vital for continuing the, le the legacy of this great prize. Um, before we announce the award, uh, we'd like to invite our finalists to read from their work. There's five of them. Uh, the the uh, finalists are, in no particular order, uh, Eve Joseph, Pete Gibbon, Melissa Schnarr, Steve Noyes and Stevie Manning. And that's it for me right now. I'll catch you a bit later when after the readings and we'll announce the winner. Okay. chapbook is The Conveyor, published by Alfred Gustav Press. Uh, the poet David Zyroth started the press in 2008 in order to produce three poetry chapbooks twice a year. He is one of the editors, along with Laura McCollum. The copy editor is Robert Adams, the designers of Dylan K. Zyler, and Daniel Coppersmith. Together they produce dozens of regular chapbooks and the smaller cut publications called Homes. The press uses home office technology and is situated in North Vancouver, BC. Right now, we are working on the production of Series 32 and starting the final selection of manuscripts for Series 33. All the regular chapbooks are signed by the poets before they are sent to the ongoing patrons and to anyone who has ordered an individual series of booklets. The press is named after the founder's father, a former both farmer, both serious and tenature, yet not without charm and wit, sometimes melancholy, always hardworking, and a great lover of winter reading. The intention is that the poems, chiefly lyrics and narratives, will exhibit some of Alfred's encounters to the elves, Ackerman, and Gustavs. Please welcome Steve Noyes. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, Pete, I really appreciated those poems because um, Catherine and I are expecting a grandchild. Brian, these are jazz hands. 
So I started to think about writing The Conveyor during the pandemic. I was fascinated by all those shots on TV of gleaming empty airports. The Conveyor has an epigraph from Marguerite Yersenar, which is, we are not the first to look upon an inexorable future. So there's a mandatory warning. Welcome to the conveyor. You have come from one part of the earth to this one, bearing a hand-sized proof of an elsewhere that admits to you. A while ago, breathing the same recycled air, you saw two rows ahead, a traveler select from brands, offer their car. Who were you to not? Up went your hand. Now you clutch the duty-free gift bag and glide through the vaulted cavern of travel land. Oh my. It seems you've accidentally slipped into the past, the granted easily taken. For you haven't quite arrived. You drift through this perpetual vacation museum where the strongest memories persist. You're like a sofon remotely sent to inspect a reduced transport sector. These days of vector and pestilence, you must rely on messed up, medley senses, the jumbled voices of your fellow travelers. You've been traveling a long time. Surely this kiosk, selling stuffed animals, or that one, keychains and fridge magnets, is the same one that you already passed and then forgot. That fellow in line for coffee, isn't his meaningful look some sort of previously arranged signal? Don't those shiny aisles of paperbacks celebrity memoirs, harlequins, true crime, trigger another swoon of deja vu? Or does it mean that your whole experience is nothing new? A blasé sensibility combined with sheer fatigue has blunted your journey's purpose. To arrange a tryst, visit your distant relatives, Extend supply chains, bucket list. I'll just read one more stanza. Here, where you can have Ethiopian goat stew with soda bread or Shanghai noodles, swizzle single malts, or spelunk the layers of flavor in a pousse cafe nibble butter puffed croissant, and if you're so accredited, refresh your face with steaming towels in Execustar lounges. Pamper your appendages with mani pedis. Isn't it great? Doesn't this transmit belonging with more wit than the nation state? Thank you very much. book, Joan Would Say, was published in 2023 by Knife Fork Book. It took Stevie 36 years because she is a late bloomer. Her finalist chapbook is Joan Would Say, published by Knife Fork Book. The book is the meal with a passion for signal design and good work. Knife Fork Book has been publishing poetry chapbooks since 2017. Our aim, saves KFB's publisher Kirby, is to serve the book, tending to the beauty of the book in hand. 
In 2019, KFB launched a second imprint, What Queer Readings, edited by Fran Wu, with a directive to publish queer BIPOC poets. Also in 2019, KFB launched a Not Your Best series, the premiere issued edited by Eric Schmaltz. This turned out to be the springboard evolving into our yearly fertile festival of new and innovative works. We have since branched out into broadsides at Mera and Polang collections distributed worldwide by Astros and Books. Find us at knifeforkbooks.com. Knife Please welcome Stevie Manning. Thank you, Madeline. Um, <clears throat> I just got here. Uh, I have great timing, as you said. Um, I'm just going to read a couple poems from Joan would say. Uh, but first, I'd like to thank Kirby uh, from Nay Fork Book uh, from the bottom of my heart. Not possible for you. After the pandemic, I had a little moment where I was like, you better get busy doing the things you want to do in life. And one of them was transitioning, and one of them was poetry. And I went to Kirby with my little hat in my hand, and I was like, will you teach me how to do it? I dropped out of university. <laughs> and, uh, and she was like, do you like split pea soup? And I was like, yeah. And she said, why don't you come over on Monday and I'll make you some split pea soup. And I came over every other Monday for, what, a year and a half? And, and John would say is what came out. So, thank you so much. Um, Called, I removed all my body hair for this. I removed all my body hair for this. A white buzzer on a Saturday night, twisting like a coil of estrogen. Joan would say, leave the city in a station wagon with a man in the middle of the night. In New York, it's more brunette. I decided I'd be a mind, not a body. Never at home, doing unwanted things in the mirror. Secretly, I've always wanted to dance, or at least treat myself to learn. Bent over, I'm not a bad looking woman. I've been told my ass was ironed by God. But at the time, I'm afraid I was full of piss, cocktails, and strong French feelings. Shame. A great part of my life. Thank you. And then should I do uh, one more, Madeline? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Okay. When you've only been a local drunk, Go to Europe. <laughs> they don't know you there. Immigrate from one imperial pint of gin a day into the province of two. Have a galois in the frill of your ear, like a wet frond of dill. Have a pisco sour, have a shattered plate. Have a hard-on in heavy set chain mail and a series of blind spots and suicides. The streets there are contemptuously lumpy. Come home, eat big food, dream about lotteries, teeming down your small needs, turning them into stars. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Canada. 
He is the author of In Search of the Perfect Lawn and the Walled Garden, and is founding director of the Institute of Linguistic on on Ontogenetics, uh, genetics, where he conducts pataphysical research. And Carl Jurgens is the former English department head, U Windsor, is the author of three books of fiction, one book of poetry, and two scholarly books by Coach House, Mercury, ECW, Porcupine's Quill, and Exile Editions. His scholarly and creative texts are published globally recently in Japan, and his poetry was selected for the anthology Best Poetry in Canada 2023. Jurgens founded, edited, and published Rampite Magazine featuring stellar international art, writing, and theory from 1979 to 2016. Rampike is digitally archived, searchable at free, searchable and free at U Windsor's Buddy Library. Google about Rampike. And uh, so their message is it's a delight to take part in this year's Meet the Press event. Big thanks from Michael Dean and Carl Jurgens to the MTP Collective for organizing this presentation of the BP Nickel Chapel Award, and warmest wishes to the authors and publishers. Also, special thanks to you, the audience, for taking part. For many years, Dean and Jurgens have had ties to Meet the Presses, and Carl enjoyed the opportunity of serving as a judge for the BP Nickel Chapel Award fairly recently. As in the past few years, Carl Jurgens and Michael Dean are very pleased to provide a lending hand to the Publisher's Prize for the BP Nickel Chapel Award. Michael Dean reminds us of Hugo Ball's words as often quoted by BP Nickel, language will thank us for our zeal. Both Michael and Carl feel that small press publishing is based on a love of language, even while it challenges the limits of speech and writing. Hearty congratulations to all those who entered the competition, to the runners-up and the winning author and press, as selected by this year's judges. Hooray for all concerned. It is a great pleasure to take part in this wonderful, ongoing literary event. I'd like to pass it on now to Brian Dora to announce the winner of this year's beat. the moment. Uh, 121 submissions. I've read everything three times. Uh, Chris as well. Uh, Chris Turnbull. Uh, we came up with a list of 20. Uh, pretty close together, both of us. Uh, Gary Barwin thought that we would be arm wrestling. We were not arm wrestling because actually what came together came together by itself. Uh, out of the 10, 20 became 10, 10 became 5. So we have the 5. Uh, we chose those five because they were voices. Now, every book has a voice, but in these five pieces, we felt there were some fairly accomplished and varied voices. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the winner is uh, the conveyor, uh, Alfred Noyes. Come on, I'll give you a check. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you? You're uh, welcome, absolutely. Uh, we really enjoyed this book. It was a, uh, a tour de force in terms of a sustained metaphor. Uh, and sustained very well. Um, so yeah, enjoy it. Thanks a lot. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really honored by this. Um, B.P. Nichol was a huge voice in Canadian poetry. I'm very pleased that the conveyor and the work of the Alfred Gustav Press has been recognized. So, as everybody knows, it's really hard to do anything all by yourself. So I have a few people to thank. It's really great to be here among so many creative people. Uh, Eve, Melissa, Stevie, and Pete, thank you very much for your beautiful work. So the 64 people I'm going to thank. No, there, there aren't 64. First and foremost, my wife, Catherine Greenwood, the maker, Thank you for the 22-year-old poem that we've been writing together. Brian Dodora and Chris Turnbull for their hard work in reading and judging all the entries, and Meet the Presses, in particular Madeline,
Devlin for keeping me informed and organizing this event. Everybody at the Alfred Gustav Press for selecting the conveyor, working with me to edit it, and coming up with an elegant design. And they are David Zeroth, Gundula Kiesler, Daniel Coppersmith, Robert Adams, and Lorna McCallum. My brother, Brian Wickers, for reading the first draft of the conveyor and, and offering his excellent comments on it. Katya and Joseph and the Beton Collective in Folkestone in the United Kingdom for hosting the launch, the UK launch of the conveyor. You might not know this about me, but I lived uh, in the United Kingdom for uh, most of the last 10 years, but there were there were a few people that I relied on to keep in touch with the Canadian literary scene, and I'd like to thank them, because it was lonely in England sometimes. And these people are Steve McCormick, Elena Wolf, Chris Hutchison, and Catherine Owen. So that's all I have. That's all I have to say. I'm really pleased um, by this. Um, everybody, buy lots of books. Go back home and write great and write great stuff and publish it. I love you all. Thank you.